and we talk to people, and maybe they don't accept us. Maybe it's better to, dust, to take the dust off your feet and leave and not stay there. That's not where you're supposed to be, brothers and sisters. You're supposed to be with believers. They are your family. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth? Listen, perfect, an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. For Satan, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Tell him a question, he asked him. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance and increased in the land. See, Satan knew what God done for him. Made him very rich. And he knew how faithful Job was to his Lord. But poor, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has and he will call, curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, thou, all that he, he hath is in thy power only upon him. Put not forth thy hand. And so Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. Now I want you to listen to the story here. When God gave him permission to come upon Job, he came upon him that same day. Job was very rich as we see. He lost everything in one day. One day. How would you feel if you lost everything in one day? You lost your family. You lost your children. How would you feel? Would you curse God to his face? I want you to think. What would happen? Because we put our children above many things in our lives. Think of Job. God took the hedge from around him and said, you cannot kill him, but you can do anything else to him. Well, Satan was ready, brother. Let me tell you, he was ready. He thought, I'm going to show this guy, and I'm going to show God where he's wrong. He will curse him to his face, so we'll see what he does. There was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the sea beans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I only am I'm the only one that escaped alone to tell thee. Really quick, wasn't it? You see how Satan can work in your lives? Are you getting the message here that this being told to us. None of us here today on this earth is guaranteed anything. All we have could be taken from us in a moment. That's why you need to be closing your eyes fixed upon Jesus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year because you're going to get yourself in trouble. I could stand up for the next hour and a half and tell you how I failed in my life and what God did to me to bring me back full circle to be a Christian. Brothers and sisters, if he has something for you to do in your life, he's going to do everything under his power except take your life. My wife prayed that God would do something to me other than kill me to bring me back, and he did. I was in a car accident hit at 70 miles an hour, and I wasn't hurt. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When you go home out of a ballroom like I did that night, and somebody hits you, you know there's a God up in heaven, and you know a God loves you so much. That he made this happen, and I knew, and I'll tell you, I knew every time I went into a bar room I shouldn't be there. God was speaking to my heart. He never left my side. Never. 
He brought me full circle around. Saved my life that I could give my life to him. Now you ought to say praise the Lord. Because he's done the same thing for you. Many times. He saved you from death. He saved you from tragedies. He saved your children. We should be on our knees as many hours a day as we possibly can just praising his name and thanking him for all we have in our children that he has given us in our care. Remember, they're his children. He gave them to you. You didn't give them to him. Remember that. Then Job arose and ran his man and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked come I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Tither the Lord gave, and the Lord has get, taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not nor charge God foolishly. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Everything that happened to Job, he still thought of his Lord and Savior. See, he loved him with all of his heart, and that's what we need to do today, brothers and sisters. We need to leave, love our God with all of our hearts. There's nothing we should not want to do for him. There shouldn't be a day that we shouldn't want to do something for the Lord. If we make an excuse and say, well, I don't really feel well, I don't want to go out and pass literature out today, you need to get up and pray and go. And you'll be fine. Our problem is, brothers and sisters, we don't put the faith that we talk about in the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace that he gives us. You know, when we stand up here and talk about Jesus and the sacrifice he made on the cross, if you take 15 minutes of your time when you go home today and study how Christ died on the cross of Calvary for forgiveness of the sins of the world, but every one of you, he died. Don't ever let that go. If you need to, when you think about it, you should, your eyes should be tearing up. Christ died just for you. Everything you have is his. You can't thank yourself for anything. Chapter 2 says, Then there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From when hath uh, whence had, uh, cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro and in the earth and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that fears God, is still evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although moving Movest me against him to destroy him without cause. See, God was telling him, well, that didn't work, did it? Job still didn't curse me. He's still a righteous man. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, that a man hath will he had give for his life. And he put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. You can do anything now to him physically that you want to do. You couldn't take, you took everything from him. He's desolated. Now you can go ahead and you can come upon him with anything you want. And the first thing Satan thought about was boils. I don't know how many of you ever had a boil in your life, but let me tell you something. If you had one, they were one too many. Job had them all over his body. All over his body. How could he stand the pain? Because he was faithful to God. Only through God's rightness could he stand the pain. And it was head to foot. Whole body.
body covered with boils. Then his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. That's what his wife told him. Curse God and die. Haven't you had enough of it? See, she wasn't as righteous as Job was, was she? She wanted to be done with. She wanted her husband to take the easy way out. Just curse God and die. And he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Wow. You ought to say, Amen, brother. That is astonishing what he went through. We think we have so many problems in our life. We look at this story, we don't have anything compared to what happened to Job. What we're going to do, I'm having, this is taking me longer than I thought. I want you to go to Job 42, and we'll end there.